today? Hey Kat, I'm coloring in some irises right now. Oh, are those Van Gogh's irises? Yeah, some of the ones he painted while he was hospitalized in France. France? I thought Van Gogh was German. German? No, no, no. He's Dutch. <laughs> Dutch, so German. No. Dutch is in from the Netherlands. A lot of famous artists came from the Netherlands, like Rembrandt, for example. Or maybe Vermeer? Vermeer, too. Okay, so that's why you have irises today. Yeah, I thought they'd help with some of the details. But, uh... Those are purple. And those are, um... And not these purple. are orange. For Van Gogh's irises, today you'll need a Van Gogh iris coloring page, which you can download from the link below. You'll be needing markers. I tend to use Copic markers, but they're rather expensive, so any off-brand marker will do. Just try to make sure you have two of each color. And you'll probably want to put down newspaper or maybe poster board, since with a lot of these, we'll be coloring all the way to the edge of the paper. And lastly, don't forget to bring your creativity. First, I'm gonna shade in the largest block of color. Let's start with the ground and I'll know where my irises are. If you look at the ground of this painting, it's not really just brown dirt, is it? There are fallen leaves and flowers that add a kind of orange color. We're gonna start with our lightest color for this area, orange. Because you can cover light with dark, but can't cover dark with light. Here, I'll scatter some bits of green. Then I'm gonna grab my red orange and add depth by coloring most of this area, but still having some light orange pop out. If you don't have red orange, you can use red or even just leave it orange. Now I'm going to add some splotches of brown. These don't have to be in any particular place. It's just dirt peeking through the leaves. Next, we're going to want to outline our leaves in dark green. Impressions like Van Gogh didn't really use black because black is a color rarely found in nature. If you look at the shadows on leaves yourself, go outside and check. It's not really black or gray, but a darker green. So we can keep track of our lines, go ahead and trace over the leaves in your darkest green. It'll help you remember what's what too. Fill in the leaves with your lightest shade of green, and already it has good shading. What do you think? Don't forget to flower stem with that light green. You can fill in the areas between the flowers too. If you look at the picture, what's behind the flowers you see up front? More flowers, so more green. Let's put down our lightest purple on some of the irises themselves. Just color them in. Then after we're done coloring the flowers a light purple, we'll add dark purple around the edges. Irises are often darker around the edges than in the middle, right? This isn't an outline. Imagine that you're painting and making a lot of big brush strokes, because Van Gogh was known for his brush strokes. Coloring all the irises the same way. There sure are a lot of them, aren't there? Now add some shade around the edges, same as before. I have a third purple that's even darker than the first two. So I'm gonna add a little shadow around some of the edges of the irises. Don't have a third purple? You can skip this step. They're already looking pretty good, don't you think?
Same with the green. I have a natural medium green that I'm gonna use to add some depth. If you don't have a medium green, finish filling in the area that was mostly just paint dabs with your light green. Near the middle of each flower, I'm going to add some yellow. This is what makes irises really pop. Then I'm going to use the yellow for some of the flowers that are behind the irises up at the top. Remember the dark green we used for the outline before? We can use it to add more depth and this will make the lighter leaves appear to jump out at you. Because your eyes see darker colors as being beneath something, it often makes things look further away too. The lighter color stems and leaves become what we call the foreground, important objects that you're supposed to look at when you first glance at a painting or a drawing. These darker patches will help create a background, the area behind the flowers. Finish coloring in the light green in the corner if you haven't already, and ta-da! You're done making some beautiful irises. Let's move on to the garden above to finish this Van Gogh. In this part, you can explore your creativity. I'm filling in the lines that are already on your sheet with orange, but you don't have to use orange. You can use your favorite color, or you can just use every color in the box for a different flower. I love orange in this drawing because it stands out so well next to the purple irises. I'm alternating shades, light and dark, to make it look more natural. To make it a garden, it needs some green, so we'll fill in the background with our light green first. Then we'll take our dark green and shade like before, but only add a little. Here I'm adding a bunch of little dots, not big patches like before. If you have a medium green, that's best for this, but you can use dark green if you need. Then you can add some really tiny flowers if you want. I'm just adding dots of pink and purple in the distance. Pink is my favorite color after all. Then some yellow and red and blue. Now we have ourselves a beautiful garden, and you have a Van Gogh. So we finished our first drawing, Van Gogh's irises. I have two drawings, can I do it too? Yeah! Yay! Yay!